Let's have a little chat about Flynn Downs. Let's be fair, there were no deadline day signings or anything like that. So I want to concentrate on some of the players in the squad who I think can help us out of this little um, relegation pickle. Let's put it that way. But actually, in terms of Flynn Downs, I don't think it is just a case of him helping us out of this. It's long term what I, what I think I've seen from him and what I expect from him, really. Kurt Zuma coming back and forming a partnership with Nyfer Gerd, be that in a back two or back three, I think that's quite pivotal and crucial to us getting out of the mess we're in. Um, but I look at things a little bit more long term uh, with Flynn Downs. I, I think we might have seen the best of Kurt Zuma, and that's that's not a great thing to say of someone that's still in his twenties. But I'm not saying he won't go on and, and play numerous games for the club and play well. But I do think he's an injury prone player. I can't imagine a scenario where he goes through a season uninjured. I think there will always be periods where he misses, you know, a few weeks at a time, uh, that sort of thing. Zuma. But Flynn Downs, Flynn Downs, I'd, I'd build around Flynn Downs. I really would. I rate him incredibly highly. I knew he could pass a move. Uh, that much I knew. I knew he was intelligent. I knew that he had a, a really good awareness of, of space. Always, his head's always, it's not me, so there's nothing wrong with my neck. I'm, I'm, I'm doing an impression of Flynn Downs without the football and without the skill. He's like this all the time. He's, he's always checking his surroundings. So there's never any surprise uh, with Flynn. Also, I love the way he has these really good leadership qualities, by the way. I don't think it's an easy thing to come into a team or to come into a club and start bossing people around. And I mean that for want of a better expression, but in the nicest sense of the word. I think for somebody like uh, Nyfa Gerd, for instance, now Nyfa Gerd, I think, is very much like Flynn Downs. I think he's, he's an instructor. He's, he has that sort of um, captain um, leadership quality about him. So when you see a Gerd on the football pitch, he's, he's pointing, he's telling people where to go, he's instructing people, telling them where he needs them to be in relation to him, uh, instructing them on what's going to happen. And, and, and rightly so. Uh, Nyfa Gerd's probably a second or two in his head in advance of most other players on the pitch. So, so he, should, he should be pointing out danger that other players might not have noticed uh, quite yet. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's one thing for somebody who's been signed for 35 million who probably knows he's secure in the manager's plans to start dictating and to start leading and start instructing. It's another thing entirely for somebody who really is quite uncertain of his place in the team to be doing it. And I loved what I saw against Derby. And by the way, I'm not basing everything I've seen on what my opinion now and what I saw against Derby. It's everything I've seen of Flynn Downs so far. I wish I'd have seen more, uh, but I, I can only go with the evidence before my eyes. He's not had a fair crack of the whip. So I thought Flynn Downs and Thomas Suchek both played well against Derby. Uh, I, thought, I thought Downs was, was slightly better than Suchek, actually. Suchek playing well was probably confirmation enough for David Moyes to put Suchek into the team against Newcastle. Uh, Flynn Downs have, would have to go above and beyond that. So, and, and me look, may, maybe will, but I, there, there aren't too many circumstances where Flynn Downs gets into the Premier League team. Now, I know, I mean, he certainly played against Manchester United, possibly Liverpool was, was the other one um, this season, but he was out of position. One of them was attacking midfield, one of them he was sort of wide right. He did okay. Uh, he, he did okay, but it's not his position. I think, aside from, so and my point being, to come into the team and to start instructing when really you don't have the backing or the confidence of the manager behind you reveals a, a confidence, reveal, reveals an assuredness in his character, which is, which is very, very impressive. And actually, it's something I look at there when, when you're that confident, when you're that sure of yourself, when you, are, uh, when you carry yourself uh, with, with those sort of leadership qualities, it's exactly the sort of thing you're going to need in a relegation scrap, and that's what, what we need. So I, I'd certainly look to be getting him in the team now. But that's not just what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the here and the now. I'm talking about the now and the future. Because I, I actually believe that Flynn Downs can take over from Declan Rice. I really do. I, I think he's an excellent player. I don't want to get into whether or not I think he could be better than Rice or anything like that. It's not about that. But I think he can take... I think he can take over. I think he can take over the mantle. I think, I'm not saying we don't need to bring in another central midfielder. We probably do because we'll have lost Rice. But I would slot uh, Flynn Downs 
into his position. I think arguably he may even be more of a natural leader uh, than Declan. We, we're going to start seeing that uh, come to the fore, uh, hopefully now. Um, look, he's technically very, very good. Good awareness of space. As I say, always looking around him, so nothing ever surprises him. Happy to receive the ball under pressure when marked. Uh, the, all the top teams do this. Um, and also it's something that, that tends to disappear when you have a team that's low on confidence, which is nobody wants to pass to anyone that's marked. Well, you know what? It's, it's the Premier League or it's top level football. People get marked. That, that's just what happens. Lanzini's a great example of this. Lanzini doesn't care if he's marked. He still says, give me the ball. Don't worry about it. He'll, just, he'll, he'll try and keep the guy behind him. He'll roll him. He'll turn him. He'll, he'll lay it off. Um, that, I mean, that's the thing. You'll give it to Lanzini. He'll give it straight back to you. Then he'll spin, get into space. Then you give it back to Lanzini. Uh, it's quite a simple move, actually. Um, and we don't do enough of it. Flynn Downs does it. Um, I, I think there's a, there's a... I talk about a GERD. I think there's actually a blossoming partnership that you could... Uh, see that, and I want to see more of it. They're both footballers. They both understand how the game's played. So you've got that awareness of space. You've got the the pass and move. You've got the ability to uh, to play from within. Let's let's call it an, an oppressive tactical um, structure from the opposition team. That's fine. He doesn't mind that at all. Uh, decent enough range of passing. No, no goal threat as yet. Maybe it will come. Maybe it won't. Don't really care. Not really uh, his his forte. Uh, but something I, I did uh, notice. Uh, aside from the, the awareness of danger, I probably should have pointed that out. That's a, that's a really good quality as well to, to sense danger. Um, and it's the technique in the tackling. We're in... Look, I think my, my favourite player probably to watch on telly, not, not live because I never saw him live, it was probably Ronaldinho. He's got sort of audacious skills and he was wonderful. I, we all love all that sort of technique. And there's a lot to be admired when you see a player with a technique like that. However, I, I think we're quite... Um, I say we, I, I, I speak for myself here. I think sometimes you don't always appreciate the other techniques. And there, there are a lot of them. It's, it's strength, it's pace, it's power, it's heading, and it's tackling, it's, it's intercepting. Intercepting's a great one. But it's a real technique uh, to tackling. And, and my word, we've seen a lot of players do it badly over time. Uh, Flynn Downs seems to time the tackle very, very well. It's something that Declan Rice does really well. You'll see a lot of players going for the tackle, and even if they win it, uh, the ball the ball ricochets off. It becomes a second ball. So you might have stopped the opposition attack, but the ball might go to the opposition. It's then who wins the second ball. The very best tackler is actually, a, a, well, the, the best tackler, obviously, was, was from West Ham, uh, Bobby Moore. Uh, go and look at Bobby Moore's highlight reel. He, he would tackle. Even when he was like, would go to ground, he would come away with the ball and he'd come away with the ball at his feet. The tackle not only broke up the opposition play, but resulted in us keeping possession and retaining possession and getting the ball. Look at Flynn Downs uh, against Derby. Yes, I know it's only Derby. Um, look at look at the two attacks he set up from tackles. Really impressive. I think the first one was for uh, Mikel Antonio. He sort of ran just wide right a goal, shot wide. Uh, second one uh, set up Jared Bowen. Uh, the the that was the tackle that did it. Not only did he tackle, he tackled in the direction of the West Ham player. It's very very the, the basic. It, it, the tackle becomes a pass. Really impressed with that. And you've got to anticipate. You're, you've really got to be able to do that. You've got to anticipate and, and know instinctively what the opposition player is going to do to be able to, to do that and to get that tackle and to time it so well. Also, the build-up to the, the first goal, which is uh, Bowen's goal, where Suchek did the lovely header. Um, Antonio did a lovely flick over uh, for that. But just in the build-up to it, just watch Flynn Downs. He, he's, he's aware the ball comes out, balls out the air. He's, he's aware, he's looking around him. The, the number of players in that position, if you go back and watch it against Derby, the first goal, that would just head the ball as hard as they could sort of to, back into the, the Derby box. That's playing the percentages, isn't it? Not Flynn. Takes it, he looks at it and just does a little... It's a, it's a pass header. He's, he's, just, he's a quality player. He really is. I mean, I'm easily pleased by small things, I guess, but it's not something uh, that, that I've seen us do. Um, too frequently. Uh, Gio, we were talking about him in our Patreon uh, player ratings video and uh, Gio was talking about he'd like to see a little bit more of him because the tackles that he makes are the sort of thing that, that get the crowd up and get the crowd on their feet and, and that's absolutely true. John Moncur used to do that, by the way. He was, was another good footballer, funnily enough. He's got a lot of qualities there, Flynn Downs, and you know, I think a lot of us made is he's a West Ham fan and that, that's, that's great. 
and that's a good part of it, but it shouldn't really factor into anything too much. We're pleased to have him. We're pleased he plays for his club. He understands what it means uh, to be a West Ham fan and all the rest of it. But, uh, you know, quite frankly, you know, one of the, one of the best um, West Ham players that we've, we've had in our history um, was Alvin Martin, who was a scouser. You know, you, you can learn about West Ham and still be, a, you know, a, re a really good player. James Collins. And, you know, he didn't grow up supporting West Ham and look what he gave to the, the club. So, um, you know, it's nice that he's a West Ham fan, but it's not the biggest factor in it. His footballing quality absolutely is. He seems to be very mobile in that central midfield area. And I just like what I see. Now, having seen him play well alongside Thomas Suchek, I, I look at him and I think, well, actually, I think he could play well alongside anyone. I think he could play well against, uh, alongside Paqueta. We've seen him play well alongside Lanzini. We certainly see him play well against Declan Rice. He brings an, an additional... When Flynn Downs plays, there's an additional player in our team who has sound technique. Uh, I, I do worry. I do worry that there doesn't seem to be any way that he can get into the first team. And I think if I was Flynn Downs now, I'd be looking at myself and thinking, well, I probably need a move or, or a change of manager. I, I would hope he doesn't think along those terms. And I hope he's patient because I do think wherever he goes, whether he stays at West Ham or he goes somewhere else, there will be a real opportunity for him. And I think once he gets into the team, it would be incredibly difficult uh, to shift. And not, not, not a great example, maybe, but... Uh, Earlier on in David Moyes' career, if you remember, uh, during lockdown football when David Moyes had COVID and, and Irvine came in and took over the team. It was a couple of games, Leicester and Wolves, <laughs> arguably our best two games under David Moyes. And I just, I, I'm sure David Moyes was picking the team then, but I can almost imagine a, a scenario like that whereby, you know, two or three games where the manager is a, maybe heavily involved and, you know, somebody else picked Flynn Downs. I, I think if you gave Flynn Downs three games uh, in the Premier League team in his chosen position, I I think it'd be impossible to shift. I think that, I think it'd be in there. I think it would then be a question of who, who are we going to play alongside Flynn Downs rather than try and shoehorn Flynn Downs and, you know, whatever, play him attack in midfield or create some sort of, um, well, just create a role for him, be it sort of, you know, right, right side, he's not really a right winger, was he, but, you know, right side of midfielder, uh, something like that. I think he's outstanding. Uh, I think uh, he has he's great ball retention. I've, I've, I've listed all these qualities anyway. I'd, I'd be interested to know what you think about it here. And I mean, certainly looking at that, there are a lot of factors why West Ham uh, can stay in the Premier League. And, you know, I mentioned Zuma, Bowen would be another one, Antonio back to form, lots and lots of uh, reasons why. But when I look at the now and look at people who, who will drop in and, and, and really improve us, particularly in a relegation fight, I think Flynn Downs is one of them. When I look to the future, I, I just see a player who, who who could prove to be an absolute bargain. What did he cost? 10, 11, 12 million? Whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's small change. And when you look at some of the money that's going for some of the midfielders just in the last uh, couple of days, really. Uh, so there you go. Those are my thoughts on Flynn Downs. I'd be very interested uh, to know what you think about it. I'll certainly be watching this space very, very closely. And uh, there you go. Flynn Downs.